Uh, and I'm curious about the Steelers, Doug, and where they go on that first day of free agency. We talked to Ray Fittipaldo from the Post-Gazette about an hour ago, and he said, don't expect it to be that atypical of what the Steelers may do. In other words, it, it, the bulk of what they do free agency-wise is going to be those second-tier free agents, second-wave free agents. But if they do want to make a marked improvement on the offensive line or corner, uh, those are the kind of moves they will have to make Monday, Tuesday, and as the free agent signing period becomes official on Wednesday. Wh- where do you suspect they look first? Well, for me, I think that they go typical Steeler and they sign their own. They look at Witherspoon. I think that's going to be one of their first moves. And my my second move, if, if, if I was there, and then this is just what I think would be a great offseason, you re-sign Witherspoon. You go after a guy like Bradley Bozeman, that center of Baltimore. One, you weaken a division opponent. Then you have a veteran guy that can come in, be a swing guy, guard center. So whatever you want to do with Kendrick Green, you have that guy, that veteran presence to be that other person. And guess what? If you draft someone, you get him at a a decent enough price that if he's a backup, that's great. He's your sixth lineman that can come in during game day and play two positions. Now, the other thing that I think they, that would be atypical but would be a great move, if they went out and made a splash and got a J.C. Jackson or a Gilmore, which was part of my first draft when I was in Buffalo, then you shore up your secondary, you help that offensive line, and then I'm going to throw something at you. When you look at that 20th pick, how about Lloyd, Devin Lloyd out of Utah, then you have your three levels on the defense taken care of until you find that quarterback. And then guess what? You get back to that old Steeler identif- ID of identity of a strong, punishing defense. While And then you have that running game that you've helped fortify with the line. And then you can wait on that quarterback and you don't have to force that quarterback pick. I think right there you do that, you got a contender. What about in the mold of what they did with Joe Hayden and do it a level forward, which is – and I find it very similar, both contractually and what you do in terms of a leader, is you bring in Bobby Wagner at the linebacker position. It's not the corner like Joe Hayden, but it's the linebacker, and it seems to be virtually the same situation. An established pro that everybody in the league seemingly likes, uh, a guy that's probably not going to cause you any trouble and is going to assimilate into any locker room. Do you have any interest in Bobby Wagner? At the right price, absolutely. Just because of his age. You know what I mean? You don't want to, what they've been doing in the past, lock yourself in on an aging vet that in two years from now or a year from now, you're either you're going to either have to restructure and kick that can or you're going to cut them and then you have dead money. But I do, I have no issues with bringing in someone like that. And I think that's something that a lot of people haven't been talking about. That second level on the defense, the linebacker position, that inside linebacker position. I've been obviously screaming from the mountaintop, the secondary, especially the corner you're going to need. But really, are, are we comfortable going into next year with the two inside linebackers we had last year? You tell me. I think that's another area you need to upgrade. Doug Whaley with us every Wednesday for the entire 9 o'clock hour. I, we haven't talked to you really since the combine wrapped up, Doug. So what are you hearing from your, your colleagues around the league about – what they thought of the quarterbacks in particular. What was your impression just from watching from a distance? Uh, what did you make of the Kenny Pickett hand hubbub, all of it, the Malik Willis uh, giving money to a homeless woman on the street? All those ancillary stories that come out of what is really just an opportunity for personnel guys to get some medicals and some interviews. No, I look at it, and to me, what I saw, the quarterback play, they confirmed to me and from what I've talked to a couple of evaluators, what they thought. Kenny Pickett had a command out there. And the thing that was more intriguing that I've heard and what I saw was how he interacted on the field with wide receivers that he probably he didn't know and he just met that this, during the combine experience. But he had that command. He has that presence. And that's one of the, his biggest qualities. But his accuracy, his timing, his touch, he wasn't overly impressive physically like throwing the ball like a Malik Willis but he had that command out there so it it justified or it confirmed what you saw on his game tape Malik Willis confirmed what everybody knew he's got a cannon of an arm but his accuracy he's going to give you a wow throw and one of those throws like what did he do but 
what he did off the field with his person, people getting to know his personality. You know, this guy is, he's raw, but he's real. And it, that is, there, there's something to, to be said about that, especially when you look at what he did with the uh, outside of the workout with giving that lady uh, s- some clothes or whatever he gave there. So that shows you a little bit about the personality. And that to me, like I said before, is the biggest thing you can get out of the combine is what type of person are you bringing into your building? Because if you start looking at it, everybody starts thinking about, wow, everybody ran fast. today. Every player, the last, when you hang up your cleats in your college and you start saying, I'm getting ready for the pros, you go straight into training for the combine. You start training for the three cone, the short shuttle, the the 40. So these are trained drills now. So it's not really indicative of what you are going to do on the football field. There's time speed and there's play speed. So a lot of the evaluators now are saying, yeah, everybody's running fast, but we're expecting it because they're training for it. It's like you're training for, for the Olympics and stuff. So, But they're not going to be training that way when they try to start playing football. So it's starting to lose a little luster uh, in the evaluation process because of that fact, in my opinion. 